Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video I'm going to show how you can use the DDS as a frequency modulator. So I'm making this video because some of the viewers and some of my subscribers actually they they said that they want more information about how this works and how you how you calculate the values for the phase increment for certain uh, carrier frequency and how you calculate the values for deviation and how, how it's all done. So I hope this explains. I, I start with describing the DDS and then how to put everything together in Vivado. So it's a long one. It's kind of detailed, I hope. Uh, and uh, let me know in the comments if I missed something or I said something stupid um, because it took me a while to to shoot the video. Okay, so let's understand how the DDS is actually working, how we generate the signals and how we modulate the signal. So those are the major blocks. How we try to understand how the DDS is made of. What is made of? So it's a phase accumulator. The phase accumulator is the block which is connected with time and has to do with the generating of the frequency. It has nothing to do with the amplitude of the signal, but it has to do with the uh, the phase or how fast the signal is actually getting represented. So it's connected with the with the frequency. Now the scene cost table, it's more has to do with the amplitude of signal, with the actual samples, how nice they follow a sinusoid. So of course, if you if you think of a sinusoidal signal, you have the amplitude part and then you have the sinus of something, and that's something which is in the brackets. It's the actual is the phase, right? And it has to do with the frequency. And then we have other stuff which they improve. Um, the spectrum, of, the spectrum of the of the signal which is generated, because you will see what we generated, it doesn't have, it has some purity, some spectral purity, but it's not perfect. But there are some optimization there, how we, and we can improve the 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 spectrum of the signal. Okay, and then uh, we'll get into the practical part: how we set the frequency, how we set the carrier frequency in case of a transmitter. Uh, how we set the deviation of the frequency and how we feed the signal, the, our actual samples, the, the signal that we want to modulate the, the carrier. Okay, so a quick, a very, very quick, this is 100 mile per hour presentation about DDS. There is a, there are a lot of documentation. Those are actually extracted from the data sheet of the, which I'm going to link in the description. So the first block, which is the one which I, um, I marked here in red is the phase accumulator. So this part, it's a glorified counter. I wouldn't call it counter because a counter counts in increment usually in increments of one. Uh, this is the counter which can can count or advance in a programmable increment. Now this is the part which dictates the frequency, the generated frequency. So how it works, there is another here and we add a quantity that we call phase increment to an existing value which is held in an accumulator, in a register. So you have here some value, a value which is getting added with the phase increment and the new value is getting stored for every clock. So imagine that we set here 3 and this is a counter which is going to count 0, 3, 6, 9 and so on. So it will advance with the speed of this phase increment. Now, this phase, this is actually the phase. It's what you have on a, if you, if you think of a sinus formula, you have the amplitude sinus or cosinus and you have the bracket. This is what's inside the bracket is the phase, right? Okay. So after the phase generator, this, this, the phase accumulator, because it's an accumulator, right? So it takes the old value and is adding with the phase increment and it keeps going like this. So it keeps going until you will have an overflow. So you run out of bits in the phase accumulator. And what is happening? It's overflowing. So it's kind of resetting back to... It's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's going to increment and then it's going to get to zero and increment. Now the speed, how fast is actually getting to the maximum, it dictated by the amount of phase increment that we set. So by changing the phase increment here, we actually change the frequency of all this. Okay, let's go a little bit further. The next block 
it's the sine cosine table. So we generate this phase, it's in, which is basically the time, right? And then we want to get uh, sinus or cosinus samples out of the of the DDS. So we have a lookup table and we look there for a phase, let's say one degree, we have this sample. Pre, this holds pre-calculated samples of sinus or cosinus. Now you can, uh, you can see most of the people they imagine that there are two tables for sinus and cosinus. Actually, they are not two tables. They're the same table because those values are the same, but they only we know that between sinus and cosinus there is a there is a quadrature shift in phase. So um, we don't need actually to have two tables. We can have one. At the same time, we don't need to hold a, a full period of of sinus uh, values because things are kind of repeating. We have a quarter of a wave. We know the other, the next one is going to be symmetrical. And then the negative ones are symmetrical around the horizontal axis. So we actually, the, the table, it's, it, it holds only a quarter of a, of, of a full wave. And that's sufficient. But anyway, I don't go in details. Now, so this, this actually dictates how nice those values are actually coming as a sinusoid depending on the phase which is getting fed by the by the phase accumulator okay next uh yeah something which were to be mentioned here actually i'll, I'll go back one slide uh, the resolution of the frequency resolution so how how fine can we tune the frequency is dependent on the uh, how many bits we have in the phase accumulator so uh, the phase increment will control the frequency, but the number of bits in the phase accumulator will dictate how accurate the frequency is going to be, the precision of the frequency, let's say. Okay, so going back to the sine cosine, the sine cosine will dictate the spectral purity. Uh, so the depth of the sine cosine will actually, will dictate the purity or the, or the, precision of the of the samples and of course this is this is it has to match the duck because we are going to forward those values into a duck to create a, an analog signal so if you have let's say a, a 12 bit duck there is not much point in in uh, using a sine cosine table which is 16 bit because you don't have enough bits in the duck so you have to look at the duck okay if i have a duck which is 14 bits then probably i should stick with the uh, sin, uh, sin uh, cosine, sine cosine table of 14 bits. So the width of the um, of the say of the sample is actually dictated by the width of the duct that you are going to use. Um, okay, so the depth of this table. So the depth. What what means the depth? What, what, what do I mean by depth? How many samples we store in this table? This will dictate how nicely we actually define a, a wave, a quarter wave, because I said that there are optimization, but let's say we, a wave. So if let's say you have a very, very short lookup table, let's say you have only 16 values in the lookup table, you will have 16 discrete, you know, values which they define the wave. It's going to be a little bit like squarish, but if you have a, a much uh, greater depth, you will have for very, very small phase changes, you will have a value in the table. So what is happening when you don't have values in the table? So let's say the, the phase uh, generator generates a phase, some weird phase, but actually you don't have values in the cosine. You need to approximate. So let's say it generates the phase is going to be 91 uh, degrees, right? And you have a value for 90 and the next value in the table is for 95 degrees. So what you're going to do, you need to approximate there. You need to figure out, okay, which one, which one is closer? Should I take the value for the 90 or should I take the value for 95? So the more, the more values you have, the more depth you have in the sin, sinus and the cos, sin cosine table, the more accurate you will be in phase because you need to take, you need to take a decision. Am I going to use 90 or am I going to use 95? So it's going to be an error there. That's a quant quantization error. So uh, there will be trade-off. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. And that will affect the spectral purity. Okay. Uh, sorry, the phase, uh, the phase error will, uh, will affect the, the purity. So you would like to have the, the phase accumulator as 
precise as you can and ideally you should have this lookup table with greater depth right so you will generate a very clean signal of course there are limits you don't have you don't want to waste resources so you want to okay now um there are other blocks here uh, actually this is not even represented in my you need to use your imagination there is a block here it's a quantization error block which is doing a little bit of dithering so what dithering means dithering is like you you sprinkle some uh, random errors which they get added to the signal and actually makes the error even lower because they kind of distribute there's like white noise so, um, and then Taylor series, which is a math mathematical method to improve a little bit the, the, you know, the, the shape of, the, of your generated signal. So you can see here, this is actually the spectrum of, uh, of, um, of a frequency generated by DDS with no, uh, without the help of detailing, without the help of, uh, of Taylor series. Now, those two things, they kind of, um, you use one or the other, you never use both. Um, and of course they come with a penalty of resources so they you, you will use extra resources and you can choose if you want and there is a um, you can choose auto and it will figure out which one works better in, for your particular case but as you can see here in the spectrum you have the your frequency that you generated here but in the same time you have those peaks which are below this line which is like 50 something 55 uh, db so you will have a noise floor which is kind of you have a lot of rubbish here uh, it's not just your frequency so the spectral purity of your generated signal is not ideal now if we go further this is actually looks how much improvement you can get in the in the noise figure or in the spurious frequencies so this is you see here there is a um, now this is a particular example which uh, generates a frequency of i don't know 0 0.0092 hertz um, and it has a spectral purity of minus 118 uh, dB, so which is this red line you see here. So this is your signal. You consider the maximum of this uh, full scale. So, and those spurious peaks that you see here, they're actually 118 dB lower than your maximum. So you can actually see here. And this is, I think this is with Taylor um, series. Now the green line is when you use dithering and the red line is when you don't use any kind of correction. So you can see here that you you nearly double the you know or you make your signal your signal to noise ratio much much higher. Anyway, this is just you know, things about uh, DDS which I'll show you in the in the UI how you deal with them. Okay, so now uh, setting the carrier frequency. So our goal here, let's say we pick we pick some value and we want to design, right? We want to have a carrier frequency where we want to transmit and we want to have a certain deviation. Well, what this means actually. So our goal is to find the phase increment. When I go, I'll go back to the first slide. The first increment is this. So we want to determine this value. What, what number we need to put here to get here the frequency that we want, right? And how we do that. And I'll show you how to do that in Vivado. And uh, this is the first the first goal, to find the phase increment for a specific frequency that we, we want to transmit. Of course, this number will be dependent on, on a few parameters that we choose previously, which is the clock of the system, um, and a few other parameters that we choose for the DDS. So we need to settle the DDS parameter first and then do this. Uh, I'll show you an example in, uh, in the video. Uh, and then the second thing is the frequency deviation. The frequency deviation, I say, okay, this is going to be a modulator. So I want to, let's say, I want to transmit on 100 megahertz, but I want to my incoming signal to make a, a modulation or deviation of that frequency by i don't know 15 kilohertz up and down around that central frequency that's the frequency deviation by how much our our frequency our stable frequency will deviate from that when the the modulator uh, signal comes in right that's that's the thing okay so how we how we do that now you can do it mathematically if you understand 
fully your DDS, or you can do it in the user interface, and I'll show you a few tips and tricks. Okay, and uh, then how you feed the signal, because at one stage you need to combine your signal, your samples coming, your modulator signal, with those magic numbers that we determined, and we need to figure out how to plug them into the DDS. Okay, so now let's go to Vivado. Okay, uh, let's start by adding um, the DDS, right? So DDS compiler. Okay, so we have the DDS here. So I'll go pretty quick because I'll try to stay on the relevant side. So we, we have some design parameters that we choose. So, sorry, those design parameters are here, I think. So we said that the clock frequency of the system is 300 megahertz. We want to generate a care of 10 with a deviation of 15 kilohertz. So this 10 will deviate up by 15 kilohertz or down by 15 kilohertz. Uh, the DAC it has 14 bit. Well, those are the, the design values. So let's go back here. So we say here 300 megs. Um, we stay with system parameters. You can actually go here, hardware parameters or system. We'll say system. Uh, I know that uh, 14 bits of output will kind of give us 83 um, spurious free dynamic range. And uh, I choose a frequency resolution of 0 to hertz. So it's a fraction of hertz, right? Okay, so noise shaping, I put it on auto. So by putting it on auto, it can choose between phase detailing and Taylor series corrected, depending which way it considers is better. Okay, so let's see it on the summary what we have. So we have 14 bits of output, which is what we want. We have a system clock of 300, this is what we want. Now our phase width, because we choose here the frequency resolution, it kind of made the, it figure out that it needs 32 bit of, um, of phase accumulator. Okay, uh, now we have here the information for phase out. I don't want a phase out output, so I'm just going to say here, I don't want one uh, as phase out. I uh, just keep it a little bit more simple. Now, let's tell this core what frequency do you want. So we want a carrier of 10 megahertz. We said 10 megahertz, right? So 10 megahertz, choose 10 megahertz. So if we go summary saying, yeah, okay, you have all this additional summary. Additional summary will tell us for something interesting. It will tell us, you know what, you're not going to get exactly 10 megahertz. You're going to get 9.9999, which is very close to 10, right? And in order to get this carrier frequency, you need to add this phase increment. Remember from the construction of the, of the, um, of the DDS core, which is here on the first slide, is this. So this is the quantity that we need to have here in order to get 10 megahertz out of this. So if we put here this number, Two, 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 careful, this is hex. We are going to get 10 megahertz, oh, very close to 10. Okay, that's fine, perfectly fine. Now, um, something important is that if we leave it like this, it's like a signal generator. It's not like a modulator. It's going to generate a fixed 10 megahertz based on this fixed phase increment, which is going to be hard-coded. In, inside the core. We don't want that. We want to change this number up and down by by some amount in order to get um, the deviation of plus minus 15 kilohertz that we said we want. So how we do that? So we go here on the, we, we need to figure out by what amount I need to modify this actually to get a deviation of 15 kilohertz. So let's, let's say, okay, I want this actually to be plus 15 kilohertz, right? So now we check what 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 this new magic number. You see it has changed here. So as you can see, has it went up. By what amount? Let's see by what amount. So we go and we plug this number. Can I actually, can I copy this from the screen now? So I need to type it, oh, I'll type it. So I go here in the calculator, clear. And I'll type that number, which is 222, 222, F30, 
0.93 and now I subtract the 2 2 2 2 2 2 value minus 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 so this will tell me what do I need to add to our 2 2 2 2 2 number in order to deviate up by 15 kilohertz and this is the this is the amount as you can see this is a 20 bit number so 4 bit 4 bit 16 bit plus 4 20 bit the 20 bit number just remember this that we need to add some 20 bits of something or subtract 20 bits of something to deviate up and down by uh, by um, 15 kilohertz okay so we go back to implementation here so, so right now this is fixed the phase increment is fixed and it, you can see it here right but I don't want to have it fixed I want to have it somehow programmed because I want to modulate so I need to give some modulation values so this frequency is going to modulate so I can have it programmable or I can have it streaming we want to have it streaming because we continuously this this continuously needs to modulate so we'll have samples coming in which are going to shift this frequency around 10 megahertz so we select here streaming and we got this input here you see now let's see the size of this input the size of this input is actually 40 bits so you always say okay why 40 bits because we have 34 bits we know we know we have 34 bits here in the summary it says 34 bits right it's because it's working on a, this bus is working on 8 bit 8 bit boundaries so there is no 34 bit bus but there is 40 because it's increments of 8 it's basically the 8 slices of 8 bit each now you, you see here the that nice uh, tab where we said the frequency has disappeared why because now it's programmable it's not set in stone as before okay so this is our core bang done now we need to add something in front of this in order to set the carrier and subtract from the carrier the the incoming uh, samples and in order to do that we need uh, an adder okay so i discovered the problem was actually a ui problem so this is an adder right so we say on the input b i want to have the constant um, number which is that, that thing with many many bits so i'll put i'll put those bits here though. Uh, take it from here right so copy those ridiculous number of bits paste them in here okay so the constant i'll paste them here so you see here he doesn't really really like but we say here you know what i'm going to give it 34 bits which is two 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 plus two zeros in the front okay so 34 now that's perfectly fine as you can see here it doesn't like this because they're only 30 yes we put the two zeros in front so 34 bits he knows that oh on the b input i'll take this hex number which is two 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 two, 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 two as a 34 bit number now nothing is actually stopping us to put here 40 bits and i'll tell you why i'm putting 40 bits and i'm going to add some zeros here You see, when the, when he likes the numbers, it's getting uh, it's getting black basically. So why put forty here? Well, I put forty because if you look at the, I'll show you. If you look at the size of the bus here, is actually forty, is thirty nine to zero. So probably some some of the MSBs there will be zero, so it doesn't really matter. He's going to use only thirty. 34 bits out of that 40 bit bus but anyway here is a zero 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 and some two 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 in hex this number 
Okay, so we say this is actually signed. No, it's actually unsigned. It doesn't matter. We can put it actually an unsigned because it begins with a lot of zeros, so we know it's positive. But we can say, you know what, this is unsigned. doesn't matter. Uh, but the one that we are going to add, which is this, is actually not this. This is the maximum, the maximum to get deviation. We know it's a 20-bit number. So th those are the samples which they're going to come in. So we say here it's 20-bit. 20-bit uh, number. So those are the samples which are going to come in into our and they will be added with the carrier which is this silly number and now you see the output is going to be 40 so if i go okay here now i can connect this nicely with this now this core is actually expecting another signal to tell when those are valid oh they will be valid every single one of them so we might want to to hook this um, t valid to a constant one think you can somehow but I don't remember now um, I think you can go here in the library and search for a high signal or something no constant constant and we can put this and we say constant value one of width one so this is basically a bit which is always one so we say that okay and then we have the clock. Obviously, we need to connect the clocks together, clock with clock. Uh, we don't want a clock uh, enable input, so we can go and recustomize. Here we say, no, I don't want clock enable, just to keep it simple, nice and cheerful. Okay, so this is where our samples, they need to get in. This is like our voice or whatever, which they get added to the two, 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 two number, which sets the carrier. And this is getting forwarded to the, as phase increments into this, which is going to generate 10 megahertz based on 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 uh, plus minus 15 kilohertz when, uh, when the input samples, they become positive of that magnitude, of this magnitude, or negative of this magnitude. Okay, guys, just to finish up, uh, clean up a little bit um, the block diagram. Added an output for the sinus and cosinus, the two signals. Uh, added the audio input, which is 20 bit wide. I said that we need to shift up by 4 bits to get it to 20 bit. Now, the clock, I generated the clock using a, a clock PLL here from 100 MHz, which I have on the board, creating the 300 megs, which we said that is a system clock. This is the other subtractor where the input, incoming input samples, they get added to the phase increment for generating the care of 10 megahertz that 2222 magic number and uh, this is getting then fed into the as a modulation input which is actually the phase increment input into the dds which is actually going to modulate in frequency the 10 megahertz carrier so um, i hope you enjoy it i hope it was clear enough uh, if you have something to ask drop me a comment and um, i shall see you in the next one